Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm just going to do a quick review of an idea I have to improve my lure turner and combination UV resin setting chamber. Um, this is it right here. I designed it before I had this space and it kind of sat in the corner of my garage. Okay, let me give you a closer look at this contraption. First of all, this is the main chamber. You can see that it's an old uh, feed bucket that I cut shallower and then I installed all these lights. The lights themselves were scavenged off a couple of uh, ladies fingernail polish setters. It's, I guess they use UV and nail polish. Anyway, I, I, I used two of them. They each had four light bulbs in them and I took one of the cases, cut it and put all the circuitry in it and then wired it all into this monstrosity. So this is an old five gallon bucket lid. These are uh, CPVC half inch end caps. I mounted on a switch with some extra outlets so that I can have a main power and then power some other things. And the switch is up here. Control the UV lights. And then they're on skids. This uh, main housing is on skids so you can slide it fit it in. So when I designed it, I really wasn't too worried about space, but now it just eats up a chunk of space in here. It'll hold 10 lures, which is pretty good, but uh, not as good as I really want it. I, I can live with just 10 lures, but this is enormous. So I had an idea for, um, for a, a more compact design. So let me show you. I'll draw it up. Okay, let's just review really quickly what I want to try to accomplish. First, I want to try to maintain the same uh, number of lures that I can uh, cure and, and turn at one time. And I want to reduce the footprint of that monstrosity. So my space saving design concept was to be able to hang something on the wall and just have sort of a drawer or uh, a cabinet door that I could open and reveal the space for the lures and uh, the chamber inside. I started thinking about it, I could make it square, like maybe a big bread box, but I thought that seemed a little clunky and a little, a little too uh, space consuming. So I thought if I used a cylinder, um, that I could turn that into a, a nice cabinet or some kind of little chamber. So what I would need to do is cut a door in it, right? So I, I might cut, I could cut the door somewhere in here and down here where, where when you opened it, it would look something like this. That, that portion of the cylinder would be hanging down, right? And then you would have the cylinder somewhere like that. This would be hinged with an, uh, probably a little piano hinge. And then here I would have to have an end plate. Let's say student blue. Let's call that an end plate. And here as well. Now I, I'm gonna have to have room for the lights and I'm not trying to make this as small as possible. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have six and a half inch discs on either side and that will I'll mount my uh, my lure holders there so it'll mimic that big five gallon drum lid but be much smaller so I've got a six inch disc going inside this nine inch circle but I need space to put those lights in the back so I'm gonna offset the disc so it's not on center so if this is the uh, if this is the center of, of this disc I'm going to move it out so that my inner disc is just in just a little bit, maybe a, a quarter to a half inch, three eighths of an inch, let's call it. So that'll look like if the center's right about here, that six inch disc will be something like that, but rounder. <laughs> so you see on the inside here, I have plenty of room for those lights. And so that disc will be on the inside here.
something like that. Uh, and then the, the lures will be placed evenly spaced around there and I'll have five. I'm going to mount I'm going to mount the motor on the outside and it'll have a shaft going through if you can imagine here going through so I'll have this shaft that goes all the way to the center of that disc and connects to the center of the disc I have on this side which you'll just barely see the edge here and this will also have its little cups that are out here Right, so this is the little convoluted, but hopefully uh, you're seeing what I'm what I'm trying to draw here. And then out here, I'm going to mount those. No, I'm running out of colors, but <laughs> trying to keep it not too crazy, but it's getting crazy. All right, the plastic housings for those light fixtures will be mounted on the outside of this of uh, this disc and protrude in. So there'll be there'll be four. very poorly drawn there'll be four at every end so here you'll see the, the light fixture come out it's those those tubes and there'll be four of those <laughs> and that's what that'll look like wow what a mess anyway at this point it's pretty much all I need. I'll, I'll mount uh, my switches either underneath or inside. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll have a handle here to help me uh, open and close it. I'll... These end caps are going to be um, made out of plywood and I've already got one of them cut. And I've got one marked already. I'm going to take that to the bandsaw a little bit. So the reason I have these dimensions is that I recently had my water softener fail. The, one of the major components of a water softener is a, a cylinder made out of fiberglass. I had to replace everything. So I'm recycling that cylinder and I'm using those dimensions to make it work. Since it's just too easy to go ahead and use this. Here's the bottom of the cylinder. You can see that's the inside, that's the outside. I cut it in half and cut it off the end of the cylinder. So let me show you the cylinder. So here's the cylinder. It's a, just a fiberglass cylinder. It's nine and a half inches. And I already cut it long wise so I could have the clamshell effect. 